name is Tony Biglum. Uh, I'm a senior scientist at Oregon Research Institute and the co-director of the Promise Neighborhood Research Consortium. Promise Neighborhood's research consortium was put together to bring together scientists who could help high poverty neighborhoods develop uh, programs and policies that would make sure that just about every child succeeds. We were inspired by the uh, Institute of Medicine report on prevention, uh, which I had the honor to help uh, write. The Institute of Medicine Committee on Prevention concluded that we now know enough about what it takes to make sure that children and adolescents develop that we can ensure that virtually every young person arrives at adulthood with the skills, the interests, the health habits they need to be successful uh, in their work and in their relationships with other people. Um, this slide shows the number of randomized trials that have been done uh, in prevention over the last uh, 15 or 20 years. Um, a randomized trial is the uh, best way to tell whether or not an intervention makes uh, a difference. Uh, think about it this way. You have maybe uh, children or families or schools and you randomly assign them to either get or not get the intervention. And then a year later, two years later, even 15 years later, you compare the two groups. And if they differ, uh, it's probably due to the intervention because when you randomly assign them to the two different conditions, it made it uh, pretty likely that they were the same on all the different things that might affect their further development. So the only thing that could really account for why the group that got the intervention is doing better than the other group uh, is that uh, you had that intervention. So this has uh, just produced an enormous amount of information that we never had before uh, about what works to help children and adolescents develop. Uh, this slide shows the uh, preventive uh, effects of a variety of interventions. This is also from the Institute of Medicine report. And as you can see, uh, from uh, prior to conception right on through young adulthood, uh, there are interventions that uh, have been shown to make a difference in terms of kids' development. A couple things about these interventions. Most of them have been shown to have an effect long after the intervention has ended. And most of them show an effect not only on the one a particular problem that they focus on, but on the whole range of problems. And the reason is that most kinds of problems that children and adolescents have uh, develop as a result of environments that uh, make it more likely that a kid might have problems with self-regulation, with academics, uh, with depression. And so when you create uh, an intervention that helps families and schools and neighborhoods to be more nurturing, uh, and to uh, reduce the uh, conditions that cause these different problems, you can help children develop across a wide range of problems. So what you see here are prenatal interventions, home visiting, early childhood interventions, parenting skills training programs at all different ages, uh, social and behavioral skills training, uh, classroom-based curricula. Uh, there's even uh, programs that prevent depression and pro programs that have been shown to prevent schizophrenia. And in addition, there are specific programs for people with particular problems. For example, uh, Erwin Sandler at uh, Arizona State uh, developed a program that helps families that are divorcing uh, to uh, deal with all of the problems that you can imagine come up when people divorce. And that program has been shown to make a difference in terms of a kid's development over the next uh, five or so years. Uh, there are also policies that can make a difference in terms of the success of kids uh, in their development. Uh, I want to just give you two examples uh, just to give you a, a, a taste of, of what's available. One of them is the family checkup uh, which was developed by uh, Tom Deshawn and uh, Beth Stormshack and Kate Cavanaugh at the University of Oregon. This is a program that was originally designed for parents of middle school kids and it joins the family in helping them to get clear on how they could uh, do a better job of uh, guiding their kids through early adolescence, but it's also strengths-based. It also applauds and, and encourages them around the things they're already doing well. Um, a study of that program, a randomized trial done in Portland, Oregon, showed that uh, the kids who got that program uh, five years later were less likely to be arrested, uh, they were less likely to have problems with substance abuse, and they did better in terms of attending school and in terms of academic performance. 
Um, Steve Ose at the Washington State Public Policy Institute uh, did an analysis of the cost effectiveness of the program and he concluded that there's a savings of about five dollars for every dollar invested. In other words, if you put money into this program, you're going to save money in terms of uh, uh, criminal justice costs, in terms of what happens when kids fail in school, uh, in terms of uh, the problems that come up from substance abuse. Uh, a total savings of uh, about $1,900 per youth. So not only do these programs make a difference in the lives of kids, but they are a benefit to the entire society. Um, this is a chart that shows the probability of arrest for kids who had the uh, family checkup. Um, and as you can see, uh, the kids who got the family checkup were significantly less likely to be arrested. Uh, there's similar results for uh, drug abuse and academic performance. Um, now let me tell you about a program uh, in the schools called the Good Behavior Game. This is a program where they divide kids in a classroom into two or three teams and each team can uh, win prizes, uh, rewards for working together uh, without uh, you know, getting into difficulties of being on task and cooperating. And uh, this was developed by a teacher in Kansas about 40 years ago. But um, a psychiatrist uh, by the name of Shep Kellum at Johns Hopkins University decided that he'd test this in a randomized trial in inner city Baltimore. What he found was that kids who played this game just in the first or second grade were significantly more likely to be doing well in middle school and he even followed them into adulthood. In middle school, they were less likely to be arrested, they were less likely to be smoking if they did the good behavior game just in first grade. By the time they were adults, they were significantly less likely to have drug abuse problems, problems with suicide, or problems with antisocial behavior if they got this program just in first grade. What seems to happen is that when kids play the good behavior game, they get better at cooperating, they get better at sort of uh, not being impulsive and not just doing what they immediately feel like. And that self-regulatory skill is so important for kids developing all the things they need to do to succeed in their social relationships and in academics. So it's just one example of a program that can make a tremendous difference and the cost benefits of that are also very good. Uh, this is a graph that simply shows the kinds of things that could be done if you wanted to help a neighborhood or a whole community make sure that kids developed successfully. Um, this shows uh, a, some things that could be done for families and some things that could be done in schools and some things that could be done in neighborhoods. And the Promise Neighborhood Research Consortium put this together as just an example of the kinds of things that can be done. And many neighborhoods around the country are beginning to implement these things. So for example, you could do the family checkup uh, to help families, as I described. There's a version of it for young children as well. You can also do what we call evidence-based kernels, which are simple uh, behavior influence techniques that have been shown to work and that you can use uh, in, uh, to help motivate kids to do the right thing. Uh, we also need to make sure that every young child has high quality preschool and daycare, uh, and that they, and again, once again, in the preschools and in schools, evidence-based kernels can be helpful. Positive Behavior Support is a program that's in about 15,000 schools around the country, uh, and that program has been shown to improve kids' behavior and improve their academic success. Um, and then the last thing under schools is Kids in Transition to Schools, which was uh, developed by Catherine Peers at Oregon Social Learning Center. And that's a very brief program you run in the summer just before kids start kindergarten, and it helps them to adjust to kindergarten and makes a difference there. And of course, there's a the good behavior game. The other things I'd mention are effective instruction. Uh, if a child doesn't learn to read by uh, third grade, they're uh, unlikely to ever successfully learn to read. And so it's, a, it's, in, in pro, it's important to have effective instruction, uh, especially in reading. Uh, also, it's important to have after-school supports. And the things at the bottom of this are community development to increase social cohesion and cooperation, community organizing and evidence-based policy promotion. Policies, for example, that limit access to alcohol and tobacco uh, to young people are policies that have been shown to make a significant difference in terms of improving 
uh, well-being in the community. So these are all things that uh, can be helpful uh, in terms of ensuring that kids develop successfully. And I've only t touched on the, a couple examples. There are many of these kinds of programs and policies and kernels. If you go to our website, promiseneighborhoods.org, uh, you'll see uh, details about many of these. I hope you'll take a look, and I would welcome your uh, contacting us if you'd like further information. Oregon Research Institute is in the business of doing this kind of work and trying to make sure that it gets out to uh, people in communities so that we can transform uh, our neighborhoods and communities and ensure the success of virtually every child. Thank you.